Welcome to the Blitz edition of Graphing Linear Equations. The purpose of this lesson will be to help you remember how to do linear equations. Well, how to graph linear equations. And it's fast paced, so go ahead and pause it when you think you need to. And now, the most important thing in a review is reflection. So in order for this review to be of much use, you really need to answer the questions, they're not math, at the end of the video, and there will be some, a link to some practice problems in the description. So let's get started. Now we're going to learn how to graph a linear equation. Now a graph is a picture of all answers to an equation, and it turns out that the equations that are linear, well, they're solutions when you plot them they make a line so they're called linear equations because all of their answers line up together now one way you can tell if it's a linear equation without the graph is if you do not see an exponent that means it would have an exponent of one linear so here's an example we have y equals 3x plus 1 and the blue line is a picture of all of the answers to this equation now when this one was graphed all that was found were two points and these two points are both solutions to this equation. But we should also be able to take some other random point, like negative 1, negative 2, and plug those numbers in, and it should be true. So the whole point of this is to get you to realize the big idea here. The big idea is that when you're going to graph a linear equation, what you're doing is you're drawing a picture of all of the answers. Knowing that it's linear lets you just find a few of the answers and you can just draw a line and know that all of the other answers are going to be on that same line. So this is the big idea and when you get stuck or confused don't think about what you should do now. Instead think about this. Think about the big idea. The big idea again is that if you can come up with a couple of answers couple of coordinates all you got to do is plot those points connect the dots now because that's the case the best way to graph a linear equation is with a t-chart now this always works it doesn't have to be in a particular form you don't have to worry about uh, intercepts that are funky like not at integer uh, answers but it does require the most the calculation I like to set up a t-chart that looks like this because I can do all my work right here in the middle. So let's pick a couple numbers. So I'm going to put 1 for x. All I got to do is substitute and simplify and then I see that when x is 1, y will equal negative 1. I'm going to go ahead and do another for 4 and it's always a good idea if you can, let me see if I can get this out of the way here, it's always a good idea if you can come up with one more solution um, because, well, Two points make a straight line, but all of our points should line up and make a straight line. And if one of these three doesn't line up, then I know I have a mistake. So let's go ahead and put these on there. There's my three points, there's my line, and um, if I did it right, then I should be able to pick another point anywhere on here and find its coordinate. So a little sloppy there, but 5, 7. I should be able to plug in 5 for x and 7 for y, and I should get a true statement. Um, and this one works, so I did graph it right. Okay, now another way, and this is perhaps my favorite way to graph a linear equation, is by finding the intercepts. So the intercepts are, well there are two of them, an x-intercept and a y, and the x-intercept is where the graph crosses the x-axis. The y-intercept is where the graph crosses the y-axis. So here's the big idea here, and this is how we're going to figure out what the x and y-intercepts are. For the x-intercept, what it is, it's where the graph crosses the x-axis and everywhere on this x-axis the coordinates will always be uh, some number for x and 0 for y. Like this might be 3 comma 0. But any point you pick on this, uh, anywhere, any point you pick on the x-axis, y will always be 0. Like always and forever. So we're going to be able to use that fact to find x-intercepts. Now similarly the, on the y-axis, x is always 0. 0 and then some number for y. Like this could be 0, 14. There's no number, so we don't really know what they are. But I do know that everywhere on the y-axis, x will equal 0. So let's use that. 
Let's go ahead and graph y equals 2x minus 6 by finding the intercepts. So we're going to find the x-intercept first. And so to do that, we replace y with 0, and then we solve for x. It takes some inverse operations, but not a big deal. And we can see that the x-intercept is 3. Now, let's do the same thing for the y-intercept. And this one's really easy because it's in, well, it's in what's called slope-intercept form, which we will learn about in a minute. Now, a side note, don't, don't worry if the equation was written like, if you had an equation that was written like this. It's the same exact thing. For the y-intercept, you'd put a 0 for x. And for the x-intercept, you'd put a 0 for y. You would do them as separate steps, not all together at once. But like for this one, the y-intercept would be 3. So anyway, don't worry about the, the way the equation works. These steps work not because the equation is written this way, but because this fact that we've got written right here. All right, so we have our two intercepts. We have 0, 6, and we have 3, 0. 0, negative 6, that is. So let's go ahead and graph these. So 0, 6 is going to be there. 3, 0 is over here. And we have two points. We know all of the solutions to this equation are going to line up. There's no exponent. It's a linear equation. So all I got to do is connect the dots, and I'm done. OK. Last way, slope-intercept form. Now, what slope-intercept form does is it gives you a point and a slope. So all you got to do is you start with the point, and you then count the slope. So the point we've given here is uh, 0, 2, right there. Now, a slope of 3, that's really 3 over 1. And so slope is rise over run. This is a positive slope, so it should be going up from left to right. So let's go ahead and count from 2, up 1, 2, 3, and then over 1. Connect the dots. We're done. So when you're talking about slope-intercept form, y equals mx plus b, the coefficient of x is the slope. And this number at the end, it's called a constant, is the y-intercept. So you start at the y-intercept first because you can't, you don't know where to start the, you don't know where to start counting the slope if you don't have anywhere to start from. Anyway, we start from the y-intercept, which is right there, and then we count the slope. So we're going to go down two, and then over to the right three, and then when we connect the dots, we see that going from reading from left to right, this graph is going down, which makes sense because we have a negative slope. Okay, last thing, vertical and horizontal lines. Now, if I look at this line right here, all of the points on this line, all of the y-coordinates are 3. Every y-coordinate is 3. Uh, so it turns out the equation of this line is y equals 3. Now let's take, one, take a look at an, an equation where x equals a number. So if I look at this red uh, vertical line here, for all of the coordinates, x equals negative 4. Since x equals negative 4 for all the points, the actual equation for this line is x equals negative 4. So here's the big idea with these vertical and horizontal lines. And this is easy to mix up. See, if it says x equals a number, the line is going to be vertical. And that's confusing because x itself, the x-axis that is, the x-axis is the horizontal axis. The x-axis is horizontal. But if it says x equals a number, well then it's vertical. Now, uh, the other way around for the y-axis. The y-axis itself is vertical, but if the equation says y equals a number, it's going to be horizontal. So don't mix those up. Always go back to finding solutions to the equation, and then you can make your graph. So again, as I said at the beginning, if you don't have a moment of reflection, then your review won't be of much use. So here are the three questions that you should go ahead and answer. Um, but before you do, you could really help me out if you've liked this video. If this video is helpful, please click like. You can subscribe and go to my website, thebeardedmathman.com. And uh, again, thanks for watching.